Looking good, Tiger. Ready to go. Let's get him. G'day, welcome to Astro Biological. I'm Ben, and today we're looking at wolf ray stars. There are all kinds of stars, but what's a wolf ray star? How's it special? Let's jump into the old tunnel of terror here and take a good old look. There are absolutely tons of stars in the universe. In our galaxy alone, there are about 100 billion by recent estimates. Wolf ray stars are among the rarest of them. It's estimated that in this galaxy alone, there are only about 500. So, what are they? Perhaps another question is, what is a star? Putting it very simply, a star is a luminous sphere of plasma held together by its own gravity. It produces light and heat by the process of thermonuclear fusion. This is a process whereby under the kinds of intense temperatures and pressures found inside a star, hydrogen atoms are fused together, producing helium. This simple process releases a lot of light and heat, which eventually reaches the star's surface, and then us, or whatever planet you happen to be on. Fun fact. A photon of light produced in the core of our sun takes about 100,000 years to reach the surface and escape. That's the fun fact. Now, the universe is mostly made up of hydrogen, about 75%, and stars are where most of this hydrogen is. In my last video, about the Galactic Habitable Zone, or GHZ, I referred to Population 1 stars. These are stars like our own sun. This means they're young stars still burning hydrogen to survive. As they get a bit older, though, stars begin running out of hydrogen to fuse, and they begin fusing heavier elements. Here's a Another fun fact, two. All of the stuff that makes you, you, all of the carbon, nitrogen, iron, gold that's in your body, are all elements heavier than hydrogen, and they all come from stars at the end of their life cycles. When a star dies, it usually explodes in a massive explosion called a supernova. Supernova disperse all kinds of things throughout the universe, including the elements that make you up. A star in the wolf ray stage is very short lived. Our own sun is about 4.6 billion years old. By contrast, a wolf ray star will only burn for another few hundred thousand years. Now, the wolf ray stage occurs late in the life cycle of some old giant stars. Stars in this stage can be identified by a high output in their atmospheres of heavy elements such as carbon and nitrogen. Wolf ray stars are extremely bright. In fact, some of these bad boys burn several million times brighter than our own sun. Whew. A wolf ray star is also characterized by extremely powerful solar winds. A solar wind is all of the light and radiation emanating from a star. We are caught in a solar wind here on Earth every second, but our thick atmosphere and magnetic field protect us from it. This wind actually has a slight pressure to it, and some of you may have heard of solar sails, a hypothetical form of transport which future spacecraft may use to travel.
A well-known wolf rat, or WR star, WR124, is actually blasting chunks of itself as large as planet Earth out in space, born on these powerful winds. WR124 is nestled within the nebula M167, right now it's flinging chunks of itself out through the nebula, propelled by those powerful solar winds, which reach speeds of up to 100,000 miles per hour. WY124 began tearing itself apart about 20,000 years ago, long before human record keeping began. Let's just think about that for a second. A very ancient wolf ray star may actually have given rise to a solar system. How so? First of all, it's commonly accepted that our sun and solar system formed by accretion within a molecular cloud. Molecular clouds are found throughout the universe and contain the raw materials of planets and stars. Particles within the clouds collide and stick, forming larger particles under the force of gravity. It's kind of like one of those cartoons where you see a snowball rolling down a hill. As it rolls, more snow sticks to it and it grows. This is basically what's happening in these clouds. Clumps of stuff stick, they are drawn to others by gravity, they stick to other big clumps, big clumps form and so on. Over time, many of these clumps have become pretty huge and hey presto, planets. One of the clumps in this cloud got so hot, the gravity became strong enough to switch it on. That means that pressure and frictional heat got so extreme in the object's core, a fusion of hydrogen commenced. Wow, that's hardcore. And the star was born. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. Mm. Just imagine though. If all of this had happened with the help of a wolf rat star. Imagine a supermassive old star blazing away like crazy, tearing itself apart and shedding lots of raw materials through molecular clouds several light years across. This simulation from the University of Chicago models this process. This model shows a wolf rat star within a molecular cloud. Extreme solar winds and output of raw material create turbulence and bubbles within the cloud, seen here in these voids. Some researchers theorised that the solar system may have formed in one of these little bubbles, protected from the outside world and safe to clump and cluster to its heart's content. Links to this model and a whole pile of other reading can be found in the description below. Time to jump back through the Tunnel of Terror and head on back to the outro. You love this video? I oh, know, because you've watched all this way. Thanks, pal. If you love it so much, subscribe to this tiny little channel and turn on notifications. That's that little bell thing next to the little, you know, subscribe thing. Click it both. Do it. I know you live. Anyway, find me elsewhere on the interwebs, links to other social media down below, and I'll see you later. Astrobiological, giving you the universe and plain human. I'm Ben, I'll see you later.